Vandiyadeva's first thought was to somehow save Kanthamaran. But if we try to save him first, his fate will be ours too. So this brutal detention should be corrected first. So he rushed and threw one of his arms around the guard's neck. With his other hand, he knocked the lamp. The torch fell to the ground. Its flame narrowed and the smoke thickened. With a tight grip on the guard's neck, Vandiyava used all his strength and pushed him down. The guard's head hit the wall of the tunnel and he fell down. Vandiyathevan took the lamp and went near him. He lay like a dead man. But carefully before he took the garment and tied both his hands tightly together. He did all this in a few seconds and ran to Kanamaran. He found half of his body lying in the tunnel and half outside with a knife stuck in his back. His veal was also lying on his side. Vandiyadeva went outside and grabbed Kanthamaran and dragged him out, he also took the job. Immediately the door closed by itself. The wall hid the great secret and stood in the form of darkness. Vandiyathevan learned that the fort had come out from the blowing wind. Immediately the door closed by itself. The wall hid the great secret and stood in the form of darkness. Vandiyathevan learned that the fort had come out from the blowing wind. Immediately the door closed by itself. The wall hid the great secret and stood in the form of darkness. Vandiyathevan learned that the fort had come out from the blowing wind. The moonlight was very faint as the thick trees and the walls of the fort obscured the moon. Vandiyadeva lifted the Gandamaran and put it on his shoulder. He also took the work of Gandamaran in one hand. He took a step. Suddenly there was a sensation of the soil collapsing and falling down vertically. He immediately got down to work and tried hard. He looked down. The stream was visible in the shade provided by the trees and the fort wall. It was also seen that the vortices were moving at high speed. Good luck. If Karen escapes, his fate may be met with death. God saved. That pesky adverse guard, but what's the use of crushing him? He should have carried out the master's orders himself. He must have intended to stab himself in the back on the threshold and throw himself into the flood of this abyss. If our foot had slipped a little more, both of us would have fallen into this river basin. Even if we survive, Kanamaran is doomed. Vandiyadevan knew that the Tanjore fort wall was approaching from the north at one point. It should be north-facing. Although there was no high flood on the north side at that time, this fort may have been a deep sink. Who saw it? Vandiyathevan left the work water and saw the depth. The whole wall goes into the water and the whole floor is not touched. Aha! What cruel villains these are! This is no time to think about that. We also have to find a way to escape and avoid the chaos. Vandiyathevan walked by the side of the flood, keeping his feet firmly pressed so as not to slide. He walked with Kanamaran on his shoulder and his vel in his hand. Gandamaran hummed two or three times giving courage and determination to his friend. After going like this for some distance, the fort wall moved away. A forest was seen on the shore. It was difficult to set foot on as there were many thorns at the bottom. Aha! What is this? A tree fell in the river. Must have been a nice tall tree. It seems that the flood has uprooted it. Half of it falls to the river. He got on it and stumbled. The tree was swaying with the speed of the flood. The tree branches and leaves waved in the water. The wind was blowing hard. When he reached the top of the tree, he stopped working and looked deep. Good luck. Murugan saved. Not so much pit here. Vandiyadeva descended from the tree and crossed the river. Here and there he managed to overcome the pits and hills. He fought against the speed of the flood and the intensity of the wind with his willpower. His body was hot and sometimes shivered. The Gandamara on his shoulder sometimes slipped and fell. Evading all these dangers, Devon reached a kare. After carrying the heavy body of Ajanubagu with wet cloth up to his waist for a short distance, he slowly put Kanamaran down in a place where there was a break in the shade of the tree. He wanted to make some trouble first. He also wanted to make sure that there was still life in Kanamaran's body. What is the use of carrying a lifeless body? 
rather than leaving it in the flood as intended by the guard. No. No. There is life, sighs are coming. The pulse beats rapidly, chest heaves. What can be done now? Can we take the knife out of the back? If you take it, the blood will rush. So even if life goes away, it will go away. The wound should be treated and bandaged immediately. Isn't it something you can do alone? Who else to look for help, Shandan Amuthan came to mind. His garden and house are on the banks of the North River. Maybe here soon. If somehow Sendan carries it to Amuthan's house and adds it, there is a way for Kanamaran to survive. Give it a try. Vandiyadeva was surprised and happy to see that his eyes were open when he tried to lift Kanthamaran again. Kandamara. Do you know who I am? He asked. Looks, looks good. Mighty one. Can't you ever know a friend as good as you? Can you forget? Aren't you a backstabbing backstabber? Said Kanamaran. These last words were like whipping Valaveria. Ouch! Did I stab you from behind? The one who started said that remembered something and suddenly stopped. Saying that, Kanamaran closed his eyes again. Talking so loudly and furiously must have made him faint again. Are humans not to be trusted? To trust scoundrels? Vandiyadeva muttered. Yet tears welled up in his eyes. He thought it better not to say what he wanted to say. He carried Kanamaran's body on his shoulder again and started walking. The fragrance of night-blooming flowers was intoxicating. It was not in vain that he thought that the house of Sendan Amuthan must be recently. Soon came the garden but that garden. What is the difference between what you saw on the first day and what you see today? The garden resembled the Ashoka forest destroyed by Anumar and the Madhua forest destroyed by the Vanaras. Aha! It seems that Pulavetare's men had come here in search of him. Those who came have done such wickedness and left. Damn! How much effort must have been made by Sendan Amuthan and his beautiful mother to nurture this Nandavan. All that is wasted. The sympathy for the destruction of the Nandavan suddenly left. He remembered his perilous situation. What if spies and fort guards are waiting here somewhere lately? They have to be dealt with one hand. Fortunately, our horse is still in the tied tree, perhaps he was left to catch himself? What can be done anyway? He should be handed over to the good people in this hut and left on horseback. A horse that starts here must go and stop. Stepping slowly, he reached the door of the hut and knocked on Sendan Amudan who was lying on the doorstep. Amuthan got up and covered his mouth. Then he said in a soft voice, Brother. You are the one who should help me. I am in great trouble. This is my dear friend. Kanamaran, the son of Sambuariyar of Kadampur. On the way to my way, someone had stabbed him in the back. I brought him, he said. Sinners. Backstabbed. What pure warriors. Said Amuthan. Then he said, I will take care of him as long as I can. Since this evening many soldiers have come and gone in search of you. Nandavana itself has been destroyed by them. Even if they go, you may well escape and survive. Fortunately, they have left your horse behind. Get on your horse and leave at once. So is my intention. But he must do something to save his life. Don't you worry about that. My mother is good at this sort of thing. She knows how to heal wounds. Saying that, Sendan lightly knocked twice on the door of Amuthan's hut. Immediately the door opened. Sinthan Amuthan's mother stood at the door. Both of them carried Kanamaran and put him in the hall. By the light of the flashlight, Sendan Amuthan spoke to his mother by signals. She seemed to know it well. She stared at Kanthamaran. Looking at the knife stuck in her back, she then went inside and brought some aloe vera leaves and a cotton cloth. She looked up at both of them. Sinthan Amuthan held the Gandamaran tightly. Valaverayan pulled out the knife that had been lying on his back for so long. Blood gushes out. Kanamaran in a state of insensibility shouted Owen. Oh, Vandiyadeva gagged him. 
Synthan Amuthan held the wound tightly. Amudan's mother bandaged the wound with the leaves of the sage. Gandamaran groaned again. In the distance I heard the sound of people running. Go! Go! Hurry! said Amuthan. Vandiyathevan took the blood-stained knife and the work in his hand. The departed hesitated. Brother! Do you believe me? He asked. I believe in God. I love you. Why did you ask? I need a favor. I don't know much about this side. I have to go to the old house in a hurry. I have to take an important message to Kunta Y Prati. Are you coming to guide me a little way? Immediately Sendan Amuthan said something else to his mother. She didn't seem too surprised by all this. She signaled to go. Jata also showed that she would take care of the injured. Sendan and Deva left. First Deva and then Sinthan got on the horse. Vandiyathevan drove slowly so as not to hear the sound of the horse. After going some distance, he knocked. The horse galloped away. At the same time as the horse left, five or six soldiers arrived at the hut. They knocked on the door. Amudan's mother opened the door. She stood in the doorway. Did you hear something shouting here? What was it? A warrior shouted. Amudan's mother was confused about something. What's the use of talking to this deaf and dumb? Let's go in and see. Said one. Is she standing in the way? Where did that flower boy go? Don't push the dumb and enter. Sendan Amuthan's mother also shouted something in mute language. She pushed away the warrior who tried to push her and looked at the door. Four or five of them held the door and pushed it so that it could not be opened. Amudan's mother suddenly left the door with a still louder wail. Two or three people rolled down and fell. Others trampled them and entered. The man is here. Someone shouted. Did you get it? Said another. He's going to run. Catch him and tie him up. Said another. Mute moaned more. It's the same blood disorder. Someone shouted. B. B. E. A. B. E. A. She said, holding up the dumb flashlight and pointing at the man lying on the ground. Oh. He looks like a different person. B. B. Is this the same person who was here yesterday? B. B. Where is your son? B. B. Dumb corpse. Shut up. Hey. Take a good look at him. Does anyone know his identity? Not him. That's him. Not at all. B. B. Anyway, he's a different person. Pick him up. Let's take him. B. 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 Saturn. Be still. Four people together lifted the Gandamaran. B. 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 Amuthan's mother screamed incessantly. Hey! Do you hear the horses? Half the men pick him up. Half the men run away. Everybody run. He's not going anywhere. Everyone ran away after dropping the lifted Gandamaran. Babe! 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 Mother Amudan's call followed them.